we're going to upcycle these bottles into some beautiful home decor. Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Today, the fabulous Indiana Jones and I have decided to get together and craft our stash. Let's get into it. I've had these two bottles for ages and I finally decided to get to them. So the first thing I'm going to do is spray paint them both black. This will serve as a primer so that we can add some texture to them. So I'm going to do that and I'll get right back to you. Okay, my bottles have been sprayed and right now I'm going to mix up some drywall compound with black acrylic paint. Now, you don't have to do this. This is totally optional. I do it so that the compound is closer in color to my top coat, but it's not really necessary to the integrity of the project or anything like that. I start applying the compound by dabbing it on with a sponge dauber. I'm moving around the bottle and then I'll smooth it using vertical strokes. Now, this is super messy, but you know, that's half the fun of it. So as I was applying this, I was trying not for it to be too thick, but then again, not too thin. I really don't want any of the glass showing. I started at the top and made my way around the bottle and worked my way down. Once it was completely covered, I set it aside for a couple hours until it was completely dry. Then I hit it again with another coat of black spray paint. So I've got a nice solid coat of black paint on there, and now I'm going to add some color. I'm starting with Ceram Coat Sand Dune, dry brushing with vertical strokes. I um, begin lightly, then deepen the color, you know, until I'm happy with it. The sand dune is like a lovely light grey color. I have no set plan for this, I'm just basically feeling my way through. So I decided that I'd go with the light color at the top, stroking down, and then I'll come up from the bottom with the same color, stroking up. I'll come in with some burnt sienna to give it a wee touch of rust, and I'm dabbing it on and then feathering it with a clean dry brush. And, you know, as I said, this is all by eye. I'm just going to work out where I want the rust to be. And, you know, if I don't like it, I can always paint over it. No biggie, right? I think it's looking pretty good so far. I'm pretty pleased with it. But I think I'm going to tone down the colors a wee bit. So, I'll use my Jolie Black Wax to tone it down just a hair. I'm tapping it on, and then... If I need to, I can always wipe it back with a rag, but the brush is pretty good at feathering it out. So I think I'm just going to go with that. This bottle needs a little patina, so I'm going to dry brush on some Folk Art Aloe. And anywhere that it's, you know, too much, I can always come back and tone it down with the wax. But I do really like the way the green is adding a little something extra to the bottle. You know what I mean? I'm really concentrating the green at the bottom so that I can add some random numbers. Just for kicks. I cut a stencil with my silhouette and I applied it over the green. And I'm just going to use cosmetic sponge to pounce on some ceram coat charcoal. I'm going to remove that vinyl right away, and then I'm going to give it a really light coat of the wax. I'm going to make a tag to embellish the bottle. I print it Bay Rum number 873, which is the same number that I put at the bottom of the bottle, onto some distressed stationery. I'll trace my tag around it, and then I'm going to tear it out to get that deckled edge. I really want this to have, you know, the appearance that maybe the bottle has been around for a really long time. I'll stamp my tag with a journal stamp. It's just a line stamp. The bottom of the stamp has like a rigid edge. So I'll follow that line with my scissors again to give it that deckled edge. It was just a little too thick to rip. I'll ink the edges of the tag and the paper first with Vintage Photograph Distressing Ink, then with some black ink. I'm using my glue stick to attach the paper to the tag, and then I'm going to use the capped glue stick to run over it to make sure that it has good contact. 
And I'm going to randomly stamp on the word special over the hole there. To attach the tag to the bottle, I'm threading through some black hemp cording. Then I'll tie a knot and I'll add a bead and then I'll tie a knot above the bead before tying the tag onto the bottle. I always like to have a knot above and below the bead. I think it gives it a finished look. I'm just gonna go around the neck of the bottle a couple times and tie it off in the back. And there we go. I really don't know what took me so long to <laughs> decorate this bottle, but I love the way it turned out. I hope you like it too. So for all intents and purposes, this is basically the same application as I did with the bottle, but I'm applying the joint compound using a spackle knife and I'm using horizontal strokes so that when it dries, I have that old world plaster effect. I'm going to completely cover the jug, including the threads at the opening. And I'm just using my fingers to apply it there and on the jug handle. That's my sweet husband bringing me some wet paper tails because this was a mess. And once again, I let it sit for several hours until it was totally dry. And then I took it out back and spray painted it black. I'm using the same colors as I did with the other bottle. Again, I'm just feeling it out. I'm adding the layers of paint with horizontal strokes to match the compound application. And I started with sand dune and now I'm adding the um, burnt sienna to give it that rust effect. I'm coming back in with the sand dune to give it a heavier application. I thought it needed it. Brushing on some aloe to give it that patina appearance. I really do like the way this looks, but I felt like it was maybe a little too much. So I come in with the black wax and I really tone it down. I felt like I wanted it to be, you know, more subdued. So I really worked it over with that wax. I'll use my compass mold and some model magic to make an embellishment for the jug. I wanted something that would look like a wax seal, and this was really the only mold that I had that kind of had that vibe, but I really liked the way it turned out. It gives it a wee bit of a nautical flair. I just pressed the clay in there and popped it out no problem. That's one of the awesome things about these silicone molds. So easy to get your clay out. I used my X-Acto knife to cut off some of the excess but I do want a little bit of the overhang because I want it to look like a wax seal and, you know, wax seals have that kind of runny bit over the sides. When it's dry, I base coat it with two coats of sand dune. And I'm going to dry brush on some aloe to give it that patina look. And then I'll hit it with black wax. Both the aloe and the black wax are just picking up that detail, enhancing it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add this lovely striped linen ribbon around the neck of the jug. I'm going to pass it through the jug handle and I'm crossing it over itself. Give the ends a little bit of an angle there. I'll add a drop of 3-in-1 glue to hold it together. And I'm also going to use the 3-in-1 glue to attach the clay compass. I found that cork in a drawer. It's not really to this bottle, but you know what? It fit perfect. And here it is, all finished. I really love the way this turned down. I'm glad I did turn down the colors. I think it makes a big difference. I hope you like it too. I bought this Dollar Tree sign last fall. It reminded me of a paintbrush, even though it's supposed to be a cutting board. So what I'm going to do is make it into a painter studio sign. I'm going to use the back. And I started painting it with sand dune and changed my mind. It was too dark for my liking, so I switched it to um, Americana bleached sand. And just the bottom portion, I'm going to give it two coats. 
The top section is Seaside Villa. It's a folk art chalk paint and that'll get two coats too. I cut my vinyl lettering and I applied it to the bottom section. I'll pounce over it with Mod Podge using a cosmetic sponge. This will keep the paint from bleeding beneath the vinyl. And now I'm going to shade all around the top section with the aloe to add some of that aging. And I'm also going to do some cross hatching in the center as well. And I do my best to keep these strokes light and feathery. I paint over the lettering with black acrylic paint and I'm going to give that two coats too. I dry brush the black with charcoal and hippo gray with vertical strokes. Kind of like a strie, I wanted to mimic the bristles of a paintbrush. I peel up the vinyl and lightly sand to distress, and I'm focusing mainly on the edges and corners, anywhere where it would naturally be worn. I'll go over the entire sign with some Joe Sonia fruit wood gel stain, again just to add some vintage feel to it and a little bit of aging. To mimic the ferrule part of the paintbrush, I have a piece of this metal ribbon from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to add some of the Joe Sonia fruit wood stain to it. I really want this to match the rest of the sign, so we need to age it a bit. I'll use cosmetic sponge to dab on some charcoal, and we'll add some aloe to get that patina going. To embellish the top, I'm using this filigree stamp. You know, just add a little something something. And this is my Tim Holtz uh, vintage photograph bank. I'll attach the metal ribbon with some E6000 and some hot glue, and I'm going to put it just above the black part of the sign. And I'm going to wrap it around the back and secure it there too. To embellish, I've threaded some black and brown hem cording through the hole, and now I'm just adding some beads to the ends. I'll knot it off, and then clip off the excess. And as always, I'll spray it with a coat of clear matte sealer. And that's it. Let me know what you think. Here's a final look at all of today's projects. I'm so glad that I finally got a chance to do something with these bottles. Let me know what you think, which is your favorite, etc. I want to thank Annie for collaborating with me today. Be sure to head on over to her channel. I'll link it in the description box for you, along with the supply list. And when you stop over to see her, wish her a happy birthday. Her birthday was this week. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.